love. Hi, how are you? I see the magnets is in here getting stuck together. I see y'all. I see y'all. <laughs> okay, I right. see y'all. Yo, thank you for your patience. I do apologize once again for the lateness, okay? okay. Um, so, Lola, we're going to get right into it, okay? The last time I seen you, you was in the <laughs> middle of the battle. No. <laughs> I'm messing with you. Oh, goodness. What got you started on POF? What got me started? Oh, also, first and foremost, thank you for um, having me on your show roll. Definitely. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. What got me started was... Um, I was newly single after a 10-year marriage that was mm. quite tough, right? It's a challenging one. 10-year marriage? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, when you get out of things that's, like, that long, right, um, you don't know which way to go. Um, right. So I said, you know, to get my mind off of either one, feeling like, I, how do I get back and fix it? Because in my country where I'm from, South Africa... Some people tend to think it's a failure if you, you know, um, your marriage doesn't work and you have a child, you know. So I'm like, ah, oh, how do I get out of that uh, mindset? So I, I um, found uh, POF and I didn't know about the streaming, never streamed before. Got into the people ask, get in the box. I said, what is this? I was, <laughs> you know, the box stuff. And I started getting into boxes, you know, shortly after that um, I was... Um, advised and told you know you should try stream it's gonna actually be fun because you have your own little room with people that come and speak to you and and yeah it's been a great time ever since with some hiccups of course got you so i just want a little bit of clarity mm -hmm. okay you were in a 10-year relationship mm -hmm. and when that ended you found yourself and said let me download pof how did you know about it or did, did you, it was, it was clearly POF you downloaded or did you download Meet Me? It was POF. So it was, people said like, you know, I'd have, I had Instagram and I didn't feel like speaking to people I grew up with or family and stuff like that about, oh, so what happened? And, you know, all that stuff. So just to go and watch other people's lives, you know, um, interact with other people from different countries. It was more on that basis. And then, um, yeah, they, they introduced me to the streaming aspect. Mm -hmm. So when you when you seen the streaming aspect, like when you logged in, what was your initial thought? Um, I was just I was overwhelmed at first, but I was also excited. Like, look at all these crazy people. There's the crazy people and there's fun people and then people that are talking about real stuff. You have people that are um, um, teaching you about opening a business or running one. You got people talking about stuff that I was going through, you know. Um, healing and trying to grow um, after going through, you know, it was so much real stuff, better than a phone call from a friend and way better than even therapy in my Ooh. eyes. Say that again. Say that so, again. Yes, I'm a strong advocate of not getting advice from the theory or theoretical, like the book, and actually speaking to people that have that experience that have gone through it and, and they're going through it with you, like single moms or women that feel like they're not enough because the, the men or the women or whoever they were with told them they're not going to amount to anything. <clears throat> so yeah, that's that, that it's been so healing. It's a great experience. I feel like this was the best um, form of growth I could have ever had. Just being around real people with real experiences that are willing to share them with you. Yeah. <clears throat> now let me ask you, were you told you ain't never going to be anything? Of course. And this is by your husband, it, well, ex? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, sometimes you stay in what's comfortable, you know, because um, that's all you know. Right. And and they do have that control once that, that, um, that, you know, the things that they say to you, if you start believing them, it's really, that was probably why I did stay as long as I did. Like, nobody's going to want to want you single mom um that that's the you've, you're depreciated i felt horrible <laughs> you know um um and uh finally getting out of that was getting my mind off of that like blocking the individual and and just you, you know not looking back my energy was in, on this app 
And today I can say I'm fully healed. I think it does take, if you've been in a relationship for over five years, I think even one year is not enough to heal. I feel like you do need my three years for me going on three years. I can now say I'm ready to settle down and get married in November to somebody. I don't know who yet, but somebody. In November? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a, Girl, that's a... <laughs> Now you plan it before you beat the man. Yeah, 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 you know, they're going to know that's 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 what's that's the flag. November. Mm -hmm. <laughs> red flag, red flag, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Wait a minute, she had a date, y'all. She had a date. Oh, well, you funny as hell, man. <laughs> 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 so wait, she just said this. Now I, I can't wait to dive deep into her life, y'all. <laughs> Let me see what else we have pre planned, okay? <laughs> All right, so Lola, let's let's bring it to as far as you can remember, where were you born? I know you said you're from Africa. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. When mm -hmm. I hear you talk, I think you're Jamaican. Oh wow. I had no idea you was even African until you know, uh, mm -hmm. until uh, my my good friend Masterin, she promotes you daily in my stream. I have to keep telling her to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Masterin, I was like, go go to Lola Street with that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I do mess She's around amazing. when I say that. No, I'm that's like, that's, that's her name seventeen times in the course of five minutes. Okay, that's very special because Masterin doesn't like nobody. So for her to read, yes, you know what I'm saying. Um, shout out to I Master. could always tell the new friends she meets. <laughs> yeah. She says your name, okay, <laughs> 17 times, five minutes like she did with you. I said, yep, they're friends now. <laughs> okay, nice. um, so let's let's bring it back, all right? So as early as you can remember, what's up, Callie? What's up, everybody? If you're just joining us, welcome to the exclusive interview. We are currently interviewing Lola, baby, Okay. So please make yourself comfortable. Royal Badge. Let me put some respect on her name. Royal Badge Lola, okay? Big level 63, okay? Uh, Platinum VIP. Is that that's what it's called, right? Platinum VIP, 32.5 million diamonds and still counting, y'all. Okay, so please make sure y'all hit her with a favorite or sit back and relax and let's listen to a story together, all right? So, um... As far as you can remember, tell us where you was born, how many siblings you had, if the parents, and let us know a little bit about your family background. Okay, so um, I was born and raised in South Africa, <clears throat> um, moved to the United States in 2012. Um, I do have, I was raised by my mom and my grandmother, you know, she's 95, still lives with my mom. I do have a sister. I think well, she's 20, oh, she's 21 now. Um, and uh, yeah, I have a daughter, she's eight. And what else? Yeah, background, being from South Africa, you know, there's a lot of um, diversity, but also still a very strong um, culture and traditions that, um, you know, I don't follow all of them, but I try, you know. Um, and yeah, there was a big transition coming to New York and um, that culture shock is, is real. You know, I didn't know how to get on the subway. Um, I felt like all the yellow cabs didn't like me or something because they never stopped. And until they taught me, you got to put your, your hand out. Like, you know, hey, hey, I just stand in the middle of the road. Like, are they going to stop? And they didn't, you know, so just um, adapting to um, such a fast paced life was challenging. But, you know, I don't regret it at all. Got you. So how old were you when you came to the U.S.? 20. 20 mm -hmm. then dang that was yesterday yeah because how old are you now 33 33 so you was 20 years old when you got to the u.s mm -hmm. all right so let's take tell us about uh, uh when you was in south africa what was your what was your uh, family like and who'd you grow up with so I grew up with my mom <clears throat> and she's a very strong, empowered uh, woman. And I would say if I had a role model, she would be one. And I feel like I'd never be able to accomplish everything she's accomplished. But, um, you know, not having a dad, you know, sometimes you would would make me feel like um, maybe something's missing. But then I look back at everything that uh, a single mom, if you're strong enough and you do everything um, the right way, then 
you don't really feel that you know you don't have both parents because my dad was killed in apartheid in I was three months old when he got killed. You know, the white people didn't like us too much. I'm joking, not, you know, but yeah, apartheid, it was tough. Um, and um, my grandmother, who also helped raise me, um, she helped a lot, you know what I mean? Like I can look back and just remember the walks on the park. Um, she would take me to like places where we feed ducks and go fishing and stuff like that. Um, I would say it was a very, I was blessed to have the two strong women that uh, molded me into the woman I, I am today. And I hope I can do the same for my daughter. And whoever I marry in November, I hope he's also, you know what I'm saying, like suitable and understands like you got work to do. <clears throat> Listen, I hope you don't get married in November, okay? <laughs> I hope you take the opportunity to really get to know this man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Dude, mm -hmm. they might just mm -hmm. be trying to get that green card, girl. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> First of all, bro, I have mine and everything. Oh, no, I said they might. I didn't assume you did. No, he gonna, and he going to be American because I'm trying to take what an American back to South Africa with me. Let's go talk your ears. <laughs> okay, so yeah. tell me how it was for you, like, and when you was in Africa, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How was it in school? Because, of course, now you're around your peoples and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So how was it when you was in school? What was the dynamics School was um, <clears throat> not, school was great. I mean, due to uh, being colonized by the British, I went to what they call the Cambridge system schools. I know they have some in Jamaica and some part, some islands as well, some of the islands. Uh, but yeah, it was a Cambridge system school. Um, academic wise, really great. You know, very diverse. Um, people make fun of South Africa saying that ain't the real Africa. Y'all got more white people than black people, you know, stuff like that. But uh, right. very diverse though. Um, um, school was really fine. I mean, okay, one thing that I will look back at, the bullying, right? Um, I feel like it used to be worse back in the day than it is now, but I used to get um, bullied at a point because being super skinny back in those days, hell yeah, I had to, I got popular. I, I had to break the code now, but um, I, was all, I wasn't the skinniest girl. And I always say the story because it's, I, I can't believe I went through this, but um. I, I had this a crush on this guy. He was um name was Brandon. He was very popular. And I was like one of those kids. I was in the orchestra, you know. Um I was I was what you call lame and boring and whatever. That's what they say. And whatever. And I whatnot. Because they said, yeah, they said that I was boring and whatever, because I played the I was in the orchestra and I did like just, you know, that weird stuff, whatever. Then um this guy, oh, he was like, you know, I like you and stuff. And I'd like for us to exchange our first kiss together. And I believed it in my spirit. So I then went out there and bought the a, a beautiful smelling lip gloss, smelled like strawberries and like, you know, a perfume and everything. And, you know, tweezed my eyebrows like Pamela Anderson, you know, those skinny ones. I did all of that. Mm -hmm. Oh God. And, <laughs> and then when, you know, it was the time where we were supposed to do it. And then... He surprised me with a bunch of his friends laughing at me with him. And they said, ha ha, she really thought you were going to make out with her. And then it was so embarrassing. Then I said, you know what? Fuck this. I got super skinny, starved myself for two months. And then I broke his virginity and made fun of him and told everybody. Then I then I became a little popular and everything. And it's so sad because now when I, when I think about it, in order to be popular, you have to become one of the bullies. You get what I'm saying? So, like, let's say you're in a group and, yeah. and you see them bullying someone else. You can't say, stop. That's not fair. You got to just, like, it's so crazy how high school is set up. But, yeah. And this, uh, this is a high school story. So, hold on. Mm -hmm. So, let me ask you this. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, when, when you're a New Yorker, mm -hmm. I don't know how it is everywhere else, but when you're a New Yorker mm -hmm. and a chick say or a dude say, oh, I smash shorty. Or whatever the girl, the, whoever the chick is, always get automatically deemed with the hoe. Lady. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it sounds <clears throat> like that wasn't your situation. It sounds like what did he try to keep it a secret from people that he had sex with you? Mm -mm. He at told that people. Time, I feel like at that time it was how old was I? At that time, seventeen. At that time, um. 
I guess it was um it's to, it makes you cool. You know, like I right. wasn't I feel like I wasn't even ready to lose my virginity, but everybody was doing it. And then I was people were like, You haven't? What's wrong with you? I was like, I don't feel like it. I don't wanna, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, um, yeah, so at that time, when you're young, I feel like it's 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 deemed it's seen as cool. Right now it's just it's just terrible. <laughs> you don't wanna right. really be looked at in that way. So um yeah, I'm very pro um self soothing and not going out there um meshing and and doing things with people you don't know what their spirits hold and 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 i also you know i do believe that there's more to sex than just the act you know it comes with a lot mm -hmm. what do you mean by self <laughs> of course my cousin in the comments is gonna um, ask that self-soothing is basically you know being um able to make yourself happy and at ease with things where you don't need a partner to, um, you know, sexually appease you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Got you. Mm -hmm. So let's bring it back a little further because I know we jumped all the way to high school, mm -hmm. but I want to know some of when you was a child, like, were your parents wealthy? Did you grow up with, did you have both parents in the household? No, dad passed away in apartheid. My mom okay. considered... So what, what age were you when he passed away? Three months. You were three months old. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now your mom pretty much raised you. Mm -hmm. Was it just your mom or was there other family members in the home? My mom and my grandmother. Her mom. My mom and her mom. Okay. Yeah. And and what were some of... The, was there any struggles with them raising you or were you pretty much a good kid or did you have your struggles with them? Um, I'm glad you're not asking her cause she would have said, you know, I was toxic and everything, but, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I am going to ask you from her point of view. Too. <laughs> um, you, I, I would say I was a rather good kid. I just had a little, I just, you know, I, I, I would sneak out once in a while, you know, cause I had a curfew. I feel like if she didn't give me a curfew, I wouldn't have had to sneak out, you know, but she, I did have a curfew. What time so, was your curfew? It was eight and whatever. Like who? That's a good time. Damn it. What the hell? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> How late you want to be out as a kid? <laughs> like, you know, like 10 or something. All my friends, like, they, you know, they'd always have house parties and stuff. So I had a sensor in my room and it would, she would, if I get up, it would alert her. But then I found out all you need is a paper to cover the sensor and I could easily get out through my sliding door and then jump over the wall and then sneak out and go have and party and stuff. I'm glad my daughter ain't here to uh, deactivate <laughs> the sensors. <laughs> joking. You See, know. I don't have sensors no more, but I did. I put a sensor on every door. Because mm -hmm. ass was jumping out of windows too, man. You see? Right, right. So... That was the only thing she could, um, you know, she would complain about now. But Quick other than story. That I put on punishment. I made her wear these cowboy boots and I gave her three dresses. <laughs> they were all the same dresses. It was like some Walmart dress. <laughs> and she had to rotate those three dresses. <laughs> you know what she did? Why? Because she wanted to go buy some weed from her friend. And she jumped out of the window. But she went, Donna had her clothes in the laundry room. <laughs> and they were still wet. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, no, that's she was that desperate. She took out <laughs> wet clothes, put it on, and jumped out. The <laughs> mm -mm. Man, I'll never forget that. Man, I'm like, ain't those clothes still wet and shit? Like, yeah, one yeah, thing about she kids. wore them wet, jumped out the mm -hmm. window, and then we caught her. We looking at her come back. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yo, these kids is different, boy. These kids yeah. is different. When they want to go outside, they're going outside somehow. Yeah. So, so now here you are. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, you wanted to hang out late, but your mom is telling you no. You got a curfew. Your curfew was eight o'clock, which is a very reasonable <laughs> time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. What happened after that? What else happened? What were some of the things that your mom? If I had to ask your mom, what would she say? How would she describe? You, you as a kid? I mean, she would say um, very loving, <clears throat> you know, um, 
you know, I was all, I'm creative. She likes the, my, you know, cause she's, she's more on um, the theory type in the books and I'm more, you know, on the artsy stuff. So um, we did spend a lot of time together. Like, like some people would think, are you guys friends when I got older? Because like, she kind of looked younger. She cheated though. Cause she did have Botox. Let me not act like, you know what I'm saying? But she, um, we used to look kind of like same age at a point. And when we'd go out to eat, people would think, you know, we would that we'd have so much fun together in that way. So she'll bring up those good things. But yeah, the sneaking out thing. Um, I just felt like she was very strict. She never hit me though. Gotcha. And I, I'm surprised at it because like I would have hit me. Um, you know, sometimes kids do need a little pinch on the butt or something, right? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, she never she didn't she was very um she didn't believe in it at all. Um I do understand certain things now. You know, her biggest fears were she didn't like men <laughs> at all. She didn't want, cause she felt like one thing about the older men, they're gonna see a young girl and say, but is your, are you getting this from your family or come with their nice car, whatever, whatever. So she tried mm -hmm. to make sure she did all of that for me. So that wouldn't happen. Um, I wasn't allowed to go to slumber parties. It was forbidden and I hated it like, damn, now I can't go sleep at my friend's house. I get it now because my best friend at the time, her dad, kissed me on the forehead and you know what I'm saying at that age at the age of 16 it felt a little weird <clears throat> but um I was like oh and he's like are you okay don't say that don't tell anyone because I was I was you know that's just how we show love to people that we see as um um family you know right. what I mean um uh so my mom didn't always tell me everything and I feel like she's gone through a whole lot than, she, than, than what she's told me, which is the reason why she had that hate towards the men that it was proven that that's really what a lot of them were doing. I'm listening. One second. My Go ahead. Daughter. Hello. Mm -hmm. The negativity. I'm getting there. you. All right. Can you go in the weight room? Okay. So give me a second. I'll be, I'll be there. You're going to have to wait 10 minutes. What's that? No. All right. Now be there shortly. Side door, right? All right. Bye-bye. To All respond right. to that comment of negativity implanted by a mom, I don't think it's negativity. It's cautiousness because now we are in a world where a lot of people have been touched in, in weird places by relatives, you know? Um, and they have to live through that. It's hard enough being a woman. And now imagine your whole life being like going through stuff like that. So I do understand um, why some women will fear that. Like for me, with an eight year old daughter, should I allow her to go sleep um, at my friends' houses with their boyfriends? You have to be cautious. You never know what's, you know, but um, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I, I see now why she was like that. Because I never understood it before. You know what I mean? Even at um an uncle. I, I had a favorite uncle. I wanted to go visit him and and stay. He was like, let's say, out of state, out of province. And mm -hmm. um, I wasn't allowed. She's like, no, girls do not stay. They don't sleep outside of their home. And I get it now. You know? Yeah. I feel different. I feel like it's okay to have a slumber party, but if there is a man in that home, no. Right, right. You understand? Right. So I would like to, like I told my daughter, I said, you're not spending a night at nobody's house that I haven't met yet. Mm -hmm. If I didn't meet the mother and I can't see that what their judgment is, and if I if, if I just look at your kid and I can see your kid ain't right, I'm good because that means you ain't doing good at the home. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So there's a particular friend that she has and if to me, like, you know, like, you know, when your child do things and stuff like that, mm -hmm. for example, my daughter called herself running away, right? Mm -hmm. And they harbored her. You as a parent should have made the good decision to be like, all right, you know what? Let me call your mom and let them know. And so they don't worry. But if yeah. you think you're going to keep somebody kid in your home and not call the parents, something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Because I'm big on that. I don't let no kid in my house. If I don't know Unless you, the parent doesn't uh -uh, know. Let me, let me call your mother. And <laughs> even when I call your mother, I'm going to make sure it's your mother and not your friend. 
Exactly. Because they even, you know, kids are slick. They even try to do things like that. So I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about when, as you, uh, you told me about your first experience and, and stuff. Um, tell me about, let's, let's jump to when you're, you're a teen now. And I know there's, your mom had certain rules for you and stuff. You kind of didn't want to abide by those rules. What were some things that happened in your life to like where you felt like, dang, I should have just listened to my mom? Being a mom. Mm. <laughs> Being a mom, I'm looking back. And how old were yeah. you when you became a mom? 20, 26, 25, 26. So yeah. it, took, it took you that long to realize because you had to become a mom mm -hmm. to realize it. Mm -hmm. So now 25, 26, and you were with the man for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's your baby father, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long were y'all together before you got pregnant? A year. Was um, it a year? No, 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 no. Well, married a year. Was married it? a year. Or something. I don't even remember this shit, man. But yeah. I got you. Mm -hmm. So now, so now when you had your kids, what are some of the things that you were going through with your kid? In what way? Like, what are some of the struggles you started having? Um, that let you know, like, do, what your mom said, like, dang, you know, now I see why my mom was like this. Pretty much just um, making sure to be with someone that 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 um, can how you, be with someone that can actually be there emotionally and not just physically, you know, because um, it was challenging as well. Especially like if you weren't someone that had, you know, small siblings around or helped babysit and stuff like that. Um, yeah, pretty much it was that. It was it was hard, though, in the beginning. Breastfeeding, um, so all the different stuff happening, right, that you're not used to, the milk and the leaking and all that. Um, right. Being scared, like you know, they say you, you, you should put the baby in the crib. And I was scared, like, oh, what if something happens? And I'm not, you know, so I, I used to want to sleep with uh, my daughter as a little, as a, as a little baby, you know, um, but yeah. How old is your daughter now? She's eight. She's eight. So she's still young. Mm -hmm. Are you having any struggles with her now at the age? Because, you know, these kids is like, uh, uh, they think they're adults at the age of five. Yeah. I'm, I have to be honest, even though some days I do get upset with her, she is perfection, a, a blessing. You know, when, when some parents tell me what they go through, like even with the ones that cry a lot, which is not a bad thing, kids are supposed to, right? She listens, man. I, and and mm. I sometimes pat myself on the back because obviously that has to do with how I raised her. You know, I do believe in um, discipline, not beating you, but, you know, just, just teaching them this is how... You know, right. you, yeah, even being polite, um, respecting adults and, and, and having manners, you know, so many things like that. She's 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 a she's a blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, she's very age appropriate still. You know, a lot of the time they want to get onto these TikTok and all this stuff. Right. I, I, I definitely Do you allow that. Nope. <laughs> OK, so. Not do you feel like you keep your daughter in a in a sense cage to like things that's going on in society? Yes, and it's bad. It is a, it's good and bad, but I feel like, um, especially in New York, I feel you like on your, your JK? I feel like kids grow very fast, and they have to, you know. You're right. Um, cold. Okay. Bye. All right. Um. So, so now let me ask you this, right? When did things and why did things start going wrong with you and your husband? If I'm being funny, I just say he was an Aries. Um. But, <laughs> but I guess it's just um, I guess both being maybe young. You know what I mean? The biggest thing it also may be because of what he grew up around, you know, um, how his mom and dad interacted in their um, relationship. You know, it was very uh, dark. 
so I think sometimes as much as you may grow up and try to fight that and not become of that, it's hard to do so, you know? Cole, not too much on Tauruses. We're good people. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Tauruses and Aries is two different sides. Aries are definitely bipolar. We not. We're realists, okay? We're going to tell you how it is, and we're not going to care, okay? But we're going to love you, and that's why we tell you like it is. Right, right. Somebody kick, somebody kick cold. The hell wrong with her? <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, nah, that's not true. Uh, a proper apology, y'all need to learn how to apologize. And what sign are you? You know what? This interview is not about you, ma'am. I'm going to leave you alone till later. Oh, I can't wait to get in your ass. <laughs> All right. So, Lola, so now I, I know I get it. Now, you know, we young and stuff. But nah, let's really get into the details. Mm -hmm. What were the things he was doing? that made you say, this ain't working. And no matter how many times you try, it's right back to the scene, and you like, all right, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, what were those things? Once it started affecting my daughter, you know, that's when I had to make that decision and get that African way of being raised of a lot of the women will stay for the sake of the kids and stuff and will be frowned upon for breaking a, a household. But we don't think about what the children are watching and witnessing and going to school, telling the teachers, right? Um, the yelling, arguing, um, if, if they don't get, if he doesn't get his way, it, it could get crazy, you know? So. Um, well, I, I get that on the surface, but we want a detail. detail. Or Got it. Something so, that happened. We want to know what much, was one of the things. Or pretty much, I'll give you. You know, for uh, you get angry, right? Communication is not. He does not. He's not getting what he wants through whatever. So, for instance, one of the things my daughter would go to school and say, um, "Yeah, I don't know. You know, my dad got angry and then punched the TV and said, um, you 'You're lucky it's not you.'" You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And they're like gotcha. a little baby. A little and that's kid something that, that happened and she went to school and said that. Yeah, yeah. So then the teachers, you know, of course, like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, that's crazy. I think that was the one where it's like, damn, now it's getting out the house. Like, so you get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yeah, that was one thing for as an as an example. Um, you got to, the children absorb a lot and it definitely um, can fracture how they act um and what they condone in in their futures as well so yeah. gotcha so that, what but what was the straw that broke that, the camel's back i think that's the terminology right yes yeah, so that, that that was a straw that that right there was the straw of course a lot of things happened um uh just the same things and and the control because he did definitely have some control for a while um, you know, when, when, as a, you know, when you're a woman and you come into something, you're I, I'm to so sorry. <laughs> hey, <babe. laughs> I'm like, what did I, I thought I glitched out. You know, when the, you know, when the app, um, kicks you out and then you got to start again. That's what I thought just happened. Yeah, she is already, or you might have to just go to the front door. Uh, I mean, not, she's on the side door. Okay. I'm going to go get her now. Okay. Bye. All right. We good. She's going to pick no her. Mm -hmm, All mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Yeah. Right, so um so, so uh let's dial it back. So you also mentioned like there was some verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the things that he would say that really like grind your gears? You're nothing without me. If you leave me, you'll never find a man that would want to be with you anyways, you know, things like, you know, the, the, the normal stuff that like narcissistic people will say, right. Um, ugh, it could, it would get ugly, you know, that's why your dad died and you're nothing. And you know how you like how the app, you see how people on the app, the trolls like, on the app. Hey, well, yeah, that shit was in real life. That's why a lot of the time I don't get affected by trolls because I had one in my bed. 
Now I have mm. one in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping with a troll. <laughs> the documentary series. <laughs> Lola, please, okay? <laughs> All right, so I that I definitely get. Did you feel like his energy made you rub off and do the same thing to him? Yeah. yeah. So you feel like his energy got you out of your element? Because mm -hmm. you I'm, 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 I'm definitely a reactor. <clears throat> a lot of the times, even men that I've talked to feel like I'm someone that shuts down in arguments. Like I just like I'll, I'll just say you're right. I make fun with the Aries stuff when I say, because I'm a Sagittarius, and I'll say, we shut down. If Aries tells me that the sky is red, I, I agree and say, you are completely right. It definitely is red. I see it as red, just, just so that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, things like that, right? For, for instance, if he said, your dad got good, weak man, got killed by the white man, whatever. So I then say something in return, about his dad and that's not cool right because the dad right. didn't, his dad didn't do anything to me for me to say that so things like that it's just you got to be so careful of who you take in because they can also you can become that person that you hate the most you know right. yeah <clears throat> right i definitely understand that when you look back at uh when you look back at those times what do you say to yourself now that you're out of it um the biggest most genuine thing I tell myself is to stay the fuck away from the Aries people. So do you really stay away from Aries? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you are Aries, I'm asking you to exit out of this stream. <laughs> Please, I do not want y'all interacting. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, if you just get in here, welcome to the exclusive interview. What royal badge, uh, royal badge, top badge, Lola, y'all. Okay, please, if you're enjoying the interview, please make sure you take the top opportunity to hit it with a favorite, guys, as well as prepare your questions towards the end. You will be able to answer any questions you would like. Okay, and that goes for the people on that Meet Me side, as well as the people in the POF side. So thank you guys for joining us for her exclusive interview. Okay, so now let's go into what do you do for work? I'm an esthetician. Okay, and how long you been doing that for? Hmm. You could say six years. Six years. Got you. Got into nursing and then I left. Um, you know, you got to really be passionate about what you do for work so you can give your best, uh, provide the best service. Um, but I, I hated, I hated nursing for some reason. Um, you know, you get attached to people and when they're going through stuff like not, like some not even knowing how long they're going to live, I couldn't do that, <laughs> you know. Um, it became a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I got back into aesthetics and um, that's my happy place. I love um, I'm not an advocate of people should be fake to be happy, but you know, any way you could put a smile on someone's face um, and make them feel beautiful inside, even if it takes the outside for them to feel that way, it still um, feels good. Gotcha. What are you most passionate about? Uh, low key, and I'm, I, I hate saying it, low key, it's really women empowerment. Um, some don't know, but when I did start on this app, I had a little show called Healing in My Heels. And it was a uh, women mm. empowerment show. Yeah. But you know how it goes. I felt like, oh, you got to choose. I never did verses before. And I think um, I learned that in order to kind of grow, I had to kind of get out there and network and get into the battles and stuff. So I left it alone. Say that name again. Healing in My Heels. Healing in My Heels. What happened to that show? They, they 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 only gave me two roses per show. Two roses per show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> you know what? This is not funny, but it's funny. <laughs> So you stop. That's the first of all. That's a very clever name. I want to say that healing in okay. my heels. Mm -hmm. I love the name. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, I think it's a great concept <laughs> and stuff. And I feel like other people on the app got like concepts of like that, you know, of healing and talking mm -hmm. about is it was it about talking about yeah, like Stuff yeah, we, we spoke on yeah because uh, <clears throat> I actually did this offline at host um, camping retreats for women empowerment so it'll be a three days um, retreats and um, we do things like bond bonfire bonding and things like that so I brought it to the app a little bit but I feel like it just um, yeah not somebody over here gifted me two roses for this show <laughs> 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 with Tauruses you can't do that <laughs> you said couldn't resist <laughs> So listen, because mm -hmm. that that caught me. And the reason why, you, you know, before you started laughing at it and you said two roses, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you only do the shows for the diamonds? No, but at that time, I was still like a little newer. And uh, I had to figure out, people advised me, like, you need to do verses, do the verses. I used to just do the boxes and stuff like that. And then, um, in terms of the growth, um, it really did come from the battles. But when I did the show, it was great. Like, um, I just feel like it's not even about that it's two roses. It's that people that were in there while we're talking about stillbirth, um, self-esteem issues that would give two roses and then slide to the next stream while the man is calling them a bee and a hoe. And then you're going to drop them the five dragons. I just felt unworthy. I just felt gotcha. I wasn't worthy, so I so, said, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. I've been on stream since I was a little late, so uh, 1220, right? Mm -hmm. Click on my, my, my <laughs> how much diamonds I made for this stream. Right. <laughs> right. Read right. it out loud. Read it out loud. <laughs> no, no, I'm, no I'm not, mind my business. No, no, no. Read it out loud. Everybody take a look. <laughs> I want you to know I got one rose above the rose <laughs> you said you had. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the point I'm making with that is I don't do it for when I do the shows and I do a lot of shows, but that's why I, some days I don't do shows, right? Like on the weekends, I won't do any show unless it's like court. I'll do that on a Friday night, right? right. So I still think what I do when I do these shows, it helps people, you know, and I focus on, although I would love to see that I made diamonds, guys. And with that being said, guys, if y'all want to give, now is the time to give and send some love. <laughs> and I also think it's okay for you to say, hey, guys, if you in here, if you're enjoying the show, don't forget to hit the gift box. You know, remind people, because sometimes when the show is good, people forget the gift. It's not like they're not enjoying your show because right, people right. in there, you can see actually people in there, right? Right. But people just forget to gift or show mm -hmm. some love during the time of the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to remind them. But also I do it for other things. I do it because it helps, allows my faves to go up. It actually brings content to the app and I'm not just sitting there and like collecting. I'm actually right. putting in work. So I feel like it's deserving. There's people that literally sit and just trade and it's not really, right. you know, that no, I really agree. streamer. No, right. you, you just lay there. You know what I'm saying? I agree because so, right now I do have a show called Entanglements and that's on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's a dating mixer. I feel like that's fun. For me, I think the healing in my heels, it took a lot out of me because like it's, it's it was, we were crying and stuff. It was very deep, you it's know, emo emotional. It was, yeah, it was a lot. And then it's like, <clears throat> at the same time, you know, back before the split getting a top badge was really hard they want you to get 250k a week they want you to get these faves and I had to do all this stuff so it's like you gotta also unfortunately that growth at that time it was more so really about uh the weeks you know what i'm saying for those eight weeks and stuff right so yeah. as much yeah as much i i love content and i love to provide it but the, the jilly's the, old concept show jilly did have a show called entanglement yeah yes that's why i didn't do it i so i spoke to the ad i think it was chris back at that time and she he did tell me that she had something called entanglement so at that time i called it situationships but now that she's no longer well i don't think the show is on pof um they gave me the go ahead to utilize that um entanglements over here got you got you got you all right, so now let's 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 bring it. Let's fast forward. Mm -hmm. What is your plans? Where do you see yourself at in the next five years from now? Okay, so the next five years, I mean November, I'm gonna be married to somebody. Um, 
you know, I'd also like to open up a storefront slash spa. Um, and I do see myself maybe moving back to South Africa with the husband that I'm going to marry in November. I don't know if he's, you know, from the app or not, you know, but that guy, we're going to South Africa and like invest in properties and mining and stuff like that. In your name? Well, both of our names. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Because this is like your 17th time you done said this, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you really feel like if you found a guy today mm -hmm. that in November you'll be ready to marry them? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's enough time to get to know somebody? If you find the right person, then yes. Sometimes in life it's good to take risks. Um because I do also feel like some men, you know, some people don't mind the whole be engaged for eight years situation. Um, but I feel like if I'm, if the type of person I'm looking for is looking for the type of person that I am and you know what you want, um, you should just, you know, get jump into it. Okay. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like that person wanted the same thing you wanted, but then you realize, okay, maybe it sound like that, but later on it wasn't the same yeah but those are like the talking stages right like once you know you start because for me when it comes to getting to know someone i'm asking very uncomfortable questions all, all, and i i dig very deep you have to be very open for me to even pass that stage with you you know your upbringing your beliefs um if you're honest enough you know that's kind of how you learn someone right yeah. so I, yeah, I just put it in the hands of god Got you, got you, got you. Mm -hmm. What type of man, and it is a man, correct? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Are you looking for? At this point, I definitely do attract the the street more like the thug ones that look all nice and whatever. Um, I just have to accept that that's probably what is going to be my future you know um because <clears throat> um yeah so i i think i'm going to find myself someone that you know is tall and handsome and and, and you know st little street and whatever and and yeah just like get married and, and so you want you a street dude it's, i want to say street nigga but i was trying to be respectful <laughs> You want you a street nigga. Ah, fuck it. I'm going to say it. You want you a street nigga. <laughs> Not necessarily. You know. Well, CEO Why Prime is here. There you go. CEO Prime. I want you to meet Lola. Lola, CEO Prime, you came in just in time to meet your future. <laughs> you know. Prime, don't beat me up. You like, I ain't no street nigga. <laughs> I'm finished. But yeah, something. Not, you know, obviously not the ones that are like, just, you know, you know, bar, you know, doing a lot, but, you know, also be um, intelligent and, and, and just, just um, emotionally intelligent. Right. And um, yeah, don't go to jail and stuff. Gotcha. Let me ask you this. What was your lowest point in life? The ending of my marriage. Why was it the lowest for you? Because not only did he tell me that it was my lowest point, but my culture told me that it's my lowest point. I failed, right? And 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 just like just yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a death that thing. Leaving something that you're used to is like a death and a rebirth. The rebirth is 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 challenging, but it's definitely a death something you're used to for that long mm -hmm. yeah so that i think that that's that's waking up telling yourself that you're not you're not a failure you didn't fail you're doing the right thing that's yeah i think that i would say um mm -hmm. right exactly 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 um red frosty yeah when's the last time you you cried and why mm, i cry a lot for no reason it can be is that time of, if it's that time of the month anything makes me I, I think um two days ago 
I don't even know why I cry. Was it because you lost the battle to Wenda? <laughs> <laughs> this app, y'all are messy on this app. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, that's not what it was. Um, I think I cry for like even like seeing somebody achieve something that they've been. I'll cry on the phone with you if you tell me you're going through something. You know what I'm saying? And like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm like that. You know, so I, I cry a lot. I cry a whole lot. You know, um, people are so strong on this app. Like I was even telling someone else yesterday, I was on a um, best friend show a while ago and gotcha. that the show was a day after of, I had a fire in my building because the neighbors caused a fire. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I got my daughter. I, I don't know what to do. I've never experienced this. And then, um, you know, we went to a hotel and, and I'm streaming there. People didn't even know because I don't like to tell people when I'm going through right, what I'm right. going through until it's over. Um, but yeah, like... So when I hear people go through similar things, I'll cry. Yeah, about two days ago, I cried. Mm -hmm. Cause, uh, yeah, so, gotcha. yeah. What was your happiest moment? Happiest moment? Damn. Uh, one, a few of my happiest moments are when I do something like that I, I feel fulfills my spirit, which is camping. I love camping. You know, and um, I love camping, just, although I haven't done it in a while. Me too, me too. But I plan to do so um, soon, you know, hiking and, and just like no phone, not, not having any type of. Right. I love that. That fills my spirit, man. I go with the, um, the Poconos. I go to uh, um, um, either Pocono Mountain or East Stroudensburg or whatever it's called a lot. Um, I have a 16 people tent, but you know, those ones is for maybe like you can fit three, three. Um, uh, double size air beds in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I enjoy that. Oh my goodness, the bonfire at night, nothing there. It's, it's so cleansing. So that's my happiest um, um, time. Beautiful, beautiful. And you said you have a couple. So what, what else? Ah, uh, what else makes me happy? It's so sad, right? Most of the things that make me happy are so like they come and go. It's like fast, instant gratification basic stuff the shopping um 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 that makes me happy making other people happy you know i feel like i've done something um it's, i've provided a service of god right to, to make someone feel good about themselves you know there's so many people that, that need to hear this that you know you're beautiful you know you're you're, you're deserving you know just supporting people emotionally because i know a lot of people don't get that Right. That kind of makes me happy because they those people appreciate it. I've had people come and cry and say thank you. You have no idea that day I felt like giving up completely. You know, so I'm I'm like, I, and I think that's if you people know me, I think that's what I really do stand for um up for as well as the bullying because not only whether it's like um uh d domestic violence stuff or people people being bullied on the app. I'm not a superhero, but I do tell people like, you know, don't stick around when things that, that, that where people treat you in that way, you know, because gotcha. like the other day I had another guy telling a girl, um, your stream is nothing without me. I made your stream. You know, people don't come to your stream to see you. They're here to see me. And like that triggered me. I'm like, oh, I wish I wasn't so upset that he said this to her, but it, it really made me feel like I relived you know what I'm saying? The, the stuff that... uh, And he was Aries, the guy that did that. <laughs> Got um, you. <clears throat> yeah, so... Yeah, that's, that's I guess, yeah. Just, just seeing other people happy. If I can, you know, be an aid to make someone else smile, that makes me happy as well. That's my same sentiment with Rose. She actually owes me half her diamonds. Wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. People come come to my stream for you, right, Ting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're not here for me. They're here for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man. So let me ask you this. What was have you ever been in trouble? Like really serious trouble? No. What about friends of yours? Do you have anyone that's close, best friends to you? And how do you handle those friendships? Like when someone is doing something that 
you don't really necessarily agree with. Agree with. I, I don't know if this comes with age or something, right? But I really stay to myself. Um, you know what I mean? I've had little holding saw ones, yeah. Like little uh, dumb shit. in Because I used to be a club promoter. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> so it used to be like, um, you used to be like, Sean Paul's going to be here. And he never showed up. And then no. <laughs> <laughs> you took everybody money <laughs> no, I, no no I was you know more so just like you know in the city like when you have like the people coming in and then you know the girls get them in guest list get them to sit with the athletes so they take them oh, oh, hold on uh, not if I sound like a pimp now hold on um, you know just like that if you, you was know. a pimp it's okay <laughs> you know um, but yeah uh, I, right now, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I, I'm so happy with with having less um, people to worry about, friends and stuff like that, you know? I found myself in situations where being kind to friends that might be entitled um, mm -hmm. can get you into problems that, that have nothing to do with you. So I, do, I love being by myself. Got you, got you. Do you consider yourself a loner? To a certain extent, yeah. But I'm really social, so that's another thing, right? Like, I hear a lot of people on the app that say, I've got I've got <clears throat> social uh, anxiety. anxiety. I'm a people's person. I'm really, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm very much a people's person. Like, even going to, like, playlists and life fest and all that stuff, I'm very interactive and, like, you know, so I can't claim that I'm a loner, per se, but I do enjoy um, personal space when I don't have to go outside and interact with people. Got you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may begin lining up in a box if you have any questions for Lola. And if you are just arriving here, you have come to the um, tail end of exclusive interview and we're interviewing Lola. Okay, so once again, if you have any questions, prepare, copy, and uh, make sure you write it down in your notes. And just so you can copy and paste it in here and I can answer those questions, okay? My question to you, almost final question to you, I should say, is... Dang, you know, I forgot my question. <laughs> but what do you love most about yourself? My spirit. I feel like I have the spirit of a warrior and it's very resilient. And I, I, um, yeah, I feel like that's my biggest um, trait that I love about myself. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, please get in the box. If you have any questions for Lola, you may type it in the comments. Okay, please keep it to one or two questions minimum. Remember, this is my interview, not yours. Get your own interview, all right? So any <laughs> questions, go ahead and ask it on either side, either on the MM side or on uh, the POS side, y'all. Y'all can y'all may ask y'all questions right now. All right. And if there's no questions, then I'm gonna get ahead and let you go. But one one of the questions I do want to ask you is how did it feel to open up today about your your life? Um, you know, if this was a couple months ago, I would have said it was hard, but lately I felt like um the more you can live in your truth. You don't know um, who might have needed to hear it. And um, I've become more comfortable with, with doing so. So it felt really great. And you're actually, um, your questions are very, very um, well thought out. So it's, it's, um, it's a nice experience. And I appreciate you having me. Thank you. I do have another question for you. I was waiting for the audience to answer, but mm -hmm. uh, to ask the question. But what would you, how, if someone, and stuff like that what advice would you give them um so it depends right so my advice would always be choose you no matter what if he's an aries just run but if it's anything else choose you you know what i mean uh uh what if they're sad sad you know what i'm saying Choose you. Aries, run. <laughs> don't do it. Like, you know, why would we... Don't... 
<sighs> don't don't do it, guys. It's not it's not worth it. I don't know what's I don't know why it's set up that way, but let me ask you this. When people come to your stream, do you ask them their sign? Yes. <laughs> do you kick out all the, <laughs> do you kick out all the Aries out of your stream? <laughs> it's not me, it's the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, grow the fuck up, okay? <laughs> oh, man, yo. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's, it's my body gone. <laughs> y'all, mm -hmm. man, listen, y'all Aries don't stand a chance in her stream, guys. I'm telling y'all right now. Y'all better switch mm -mm. your signs up. Mm -mm. Dude. Mm -mm. Oh, my gosh. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna front though. They they all a lot to deal with. They all a lot to deal with. And then they hide behind. We like to debate. And Obsidian said in Aries defense, Sag be playing too much. What do you have to say about that? Sages, sometimes you know we they say that we're very playful. You know they do, but again, I can see you being playful. I'm definitely playful, but again, it's just um, just the 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 arguing you know the and i'm speaking from like my past relationship versus even recent interactions like just two days ago right the guy that started he's like lola can you tell this girl yes, that i can, like obsidian. that she's wrong you know what i mean so and obsidian stated they say they're being abused and when they doing the abuse mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that do you ever find yourself in a position to where Although you're accusing them of abuse, but you're also causing some of the abuse as well. Um, I guess you could say, you know, some people can say that abuse can come in many forms. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some people also find that some women deserve, you know what I'm saying, to be beaten up or whatever. Uh, you know, so it just it depends on who the man is or who the woman is. Well, not people who are referring to you. For me, I feel like no matter what, the mistake is being with people of like, if you feel, if you already see certain things like of communication just not working out, that's where you should end it, you know, automatically to protect your peace. Um, and that that's the first way to actually get rid of those situations, you know? Gotcha. All right, we got a question from Obsidian. Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm here. This is just for the Aries. I'm just speaking for the Aries. So, being that us Aries, we always seem like we I knew he was an Aries. Or... Huh? That's what I knew he was an yeah, Aries. You know... was doing a lot in these comments. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I have to speak first. So, I just got a question for the lovely young, young lady. Do you, what advice would you give the Aries that you see that acts like this? Like, because I, I'm just curious. So, what for advice instance, do you have for them? If they... I, I don't really have advice to an Aries. You can't give advice to someone. You can't change anyone, right? I was just in a court situation right. where that same Aries told the judge, fuck you. You got me fucked up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And the right. judge is like, what? You know what I'm saying? So, it's just, it's just, it's just like sometimes it's okay to just Do you not feel like being a sad that sometimes y'all bring out being because y'all sad just are very crazy too. So being a sad, do you feel like when you interact with an Aries that sometimes y'all stubborn personality could clash with that Aries? Because y'all making it seem like we're the bad guys. Us Aries, we just hard to understand. But when we understood, we would love y'all. I think role. You just got to know how to fall in line. You should definitely right. have a, a a conversation on zodiac signs role model. I think it'd be great for you to do that. Um, oh no, we're asking you. But, wait, so hold on. Well, here's what I would say, Obsidian. You came in on the tail end of the conversation, and she spoke about her experience, her life story of her dealing with an Aries of hers. And what she did say is sometimes when dealing with an Aries, you tend to turn into something, I'm, don't quote me, but you tend to mock the same traits that they have. So if they're being verbal abuse, they begin to be verbal abuse. And I think that's a fair assessment. 
Okay, so she didn't she didn't just put everything on the Aries, but she just says her okay. her sign and she don't mesh with Aries. Now I don't know, okay, Obsidian. Okay. It sounds like you're trying to be that man she marries in November that she keeps talking about. <laughs> I don't know about it. No, I, 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 I just heard it. I was in. The, I was on the other side, and then I heard the. I was on the, I was in, uh, the meet me side. Then I heard the Aries shit. I'm like, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. as the, the, the defense for the Aries. Nah, that's just not in my future, love. I just want the Sagittarius to understand that. Yo, listen, we love y'all. Sometimes y'all just gotta, you know. Sometimes y'all gotta understand that us Aries, we are drovers, and once y'all be able to grow and see situations clearly, then y'all will get peace from us. Speaking on all the areas. Alright. Alright. Thank you, Obsidian. Well, Molly, I gotta go back to work. It looked like... Yeah, late, late. Huh? Alright. Thank you, Obsidian. Thank you for your question. So, do you want to chime in on that or... Who? Do you want to chime in wait on what he just said? Do oh, you feel again. Like, do you feel like there could possibly be some good Aries out there? I think there's good in everyone. But I feel like to understand, if you do believe in zodiac signs, there's that argumentative trait that you cannot take away. Like the one that just happened? I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying there's that argumentative trait. And I'm speaking to about my experience of having them as friends, having one as a, a husband, having one, even the ones now as friends, it's just a thing that they say they enjoy to debate. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Um, whether it's even just like socially, it's like a sport. You get what I'm saying? Some men, their sport is to go to a cigar lounge and blow off steam. Others want to debate, right? And, and, and stuff. Yeah. Right. Alexa, stop. What do you choose to do? Last question, and then I'm, when when in a situation and then things is getting heated, what are some of the things that you do to de-escalate? Uh, I think like you say, long term, because sometimes um, I'm not perfect, right? So to de-es to de-escalate situations, um, woof. Sometimes I'll be combative back, right? But mm -hmm. the way to de-escalate is to completely remove yourself from any form of situation that could happen again. You get what I mean? Gotcha. So I think I do a more permanent de-escalate, which is just remove yourself from the situation. And it's hard, as good as the people may be, but it's going to happen again. Right. <laughs> All right. Bottom, um, bottom, bottom button right next to the next box. All right. Or well, does somebody want to come in the box and ask a question? Is that what it is? If not, I will let uh, Royal Badge Lola leave, guys. You could either type it in the comments or you could come in the box and ask your question. Hmm. I know, but the at Obsidian, I don't, you wasn't here at the beginning, but that's one of the things she said y'all like to do. You see how you like the debate? <laughs> She don't like that. She don't want to debate with you. <laughs> so you, you came in here and proved the right about Aries. <laughs> she sat real quiet like I'm not about to debate with this Aries. <laughs> she told me to remove all Aries, man. And here you come marching over here. <clears throat> all right, y'all. Let me see who's in the box. Life and Liberty, you will not have the privilege to get in this box during my show. You can get in my box any other time when I feel like putting up with you. Okay? <laughs> All right. I don't trust you to do the right thing in my box during my show. Your bodyguards are not guarding. <laughs> All right, y'all. So it looks like there's no other questions, y'all. Life and Liberty, if I let you in the box and you don't ask a question pertaining to this show or you try to insult someone in here, I'm going to kick you permanently. Okay. All right, buzz the box again. I warned you. And are you an Aries before letting you in here? <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm protected. <laughs> I fucked up the first time. I won't let Obsidian back in. 
Uh, All right, what's okay. up, Life and Liberty? What's your question to Lola? Is it better to be feared or loved? Better in what sense, right? In any sense. Um, maybe in a workplace, being feared might be better than being loved. But in a relationship, it's better to be loved than be feared. Is it, can you be both in a relationship? Yeah, but that doesn't make it a good relationship. Mm. Being feared. You want to be respected, but not feared. Interesting. Well, Thank that was you my for your question. question. That was good. I like this side of you. You know what? Liberty. Matt, uh, I'm going to let you out before you ruin it. <laughs> I complimented you now, player. Don't ruin it. Gently done. You got a question? <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'm at work on lunch break anyway. But I'm just trying to ask her, how can you be so pretty and be going through so much stuff? I mean, you probably got a whole lot of options. But is it somebody in your past that you feel like you can't let go and don't want to move on to the next? Or No. What? I mean... The real truth, when people ask that, why are you so pretty and you go through this, is because we're all human. Looks are not everything. When you take off the makeup, when you take off the skin, you're still spirit. You know, um, it's, 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 you, you find, look, look at who's the one of the most beautiful women, Halle Berry. Look how they did her dirty, cheated on her. You know what I'm saying? All of that crazy stuff. Looks is not shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not pretty. Oh, uh, oh, okay. What was that? Oh. How you do that? Okay. <laughs> you should have well, just told me you had yeah, money, baby. Yeah, I I'm like, what is that? So, okay, but Thank don't you. you feel like you beautiful on, on the inside as far as your spirit and everything? It don't matter what you look like when you get up in the morning, whatever? It should be that way, but in the society we live in today, it's not, unfortunately. It's not always the case, but it should be, right? What's your but, sign, Gently Done? Um, gently mm -hmm. done? I hate to say it because I don't want y'all be hating on me like that because, you know, we the, we the, we the, we one of the most, the most world loved and can look Virgo. Oh, you a Taurus. <laughs> oh, sorry. What that mean? <laughs> what that mean? I don't you know said well love. That would be a Taurus, sir. Not a Virgo. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we trying to put that love out there. We trying to get we, it back. I mean. We tolerate Virgos, though. Oh, you tolerate. Well, love. What we do you tolerate. mean, we? Well, yeah, I got so anger what, issues too. Yeah, I oh Lord, be strong though. I ain't gonna hold you, Lord. Mm. I didn't okay, like so, when she said hi. I'm not gonna talk to her for ten years. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm putting like this real, real quick. So, okay, so I got in a relationship for like twenty years. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I'm kind of old like that. I say, but anyway, with a Pisces, but they say. That's who Virgo foe be with all this. That's your love make whatever. Was all. Yeah, that was the worst thing I could have ever done. Yeah, they, they lied to you. I don't even know why they even Yeah, they, they lied to me. Yeah, <clears throat> uh -huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Burn my, burn my just phones get up. Pick from you. I ain't gonna hold you. So my car, burn my house up, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. But anyway, trying to stay out of jail. So. I, well, I'm not gonna hold you gently done. This interview is not about you. I would love to hear your story on another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah Lola it's crazy, has okay, yeah, but her. things to do. Her. You know, but what I would love for you to do is favorite her. Hit her with a favorite. Go into a stream if you enjoy her How company and getting to know her. There's a little gift box that you could click and you could show us some love, man. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for you. Thank you yeah. so much, gently done. Appreciate I appreciate you taking the box. Any other time you could come in the box and you could kick it, okay? Right. All right. Thank you so much. Lola, it was a pleasure interviewing you. Do you have anything that you want to promote or talk about before we get out of here? Um, Ladies and gentlemen, please favor her. Send her any love that you, you got any love to send her. Please show us some I, love. I will be, and I forgot I got two auctions, but those I think I'm doing more so for fun. Um, uh, Smurfies and best friends. But I do have my show, which I enjoy, enjoy, enjoy hosting it's been so much fun lately um it's it's called entanglements it's on every tuesday at 9 p.m eastern time and the winner um wins a virtual netflix and chill date with the person that's chosen so you know sorry the guest of the show so um definitely come check that out also follow my instagram which is lola90 um underscore pof and i you know i do a lot on instagram as well 
Thank you, Roll, for having me. It's been amazing. Um, very, very nice welcoming and very nice warm ambiance in your stream. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lola. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to be on the show, please do not be afraid to hit up my main man, Medusa, okay? Top badge, Medusa. Royal badge, Medusa, guys. He books everyone for this show, so if you would like to be a part of it, hit him up so he can book you for the show, y'all. Thank you so much, Lola, and we out of here, guys. We are out of here. Where is that beat? Okay, there it go. Yeah. All right, let me play my clothes out music. Fresh off the clock. My chicken.